In Acts 17, for many years, you heard me preach about Paul in Athens. I talk about the third space. I talk about how we got to reach the, the realm of influence and to shine for Jesus. Now let's revisit this because I want to remind you what we, we learned over the years. Acts 17 and verse 16, while Paul was waiting for them in Athens, he was greatly distressed to see that the city was full of idols. Now back then, Athens was the cultural center of the Roman Empire. It was the leading city for business, for education. All the philosophy came from the Greeks, right? It was a leading city of arts, of fashion, of religion. It was a center of influence for the entire empire. The first place Paul went to was the church. Why? It's the house of God. And rightly so, this is what we should do. That's why the first thing we do on the first day of every week, we come to the house of God. Verse 17, he reasoned in the synagogue and with the Jews and with the God-fearing Greeks, as well as in the marketplace day by day with those who happened to be there. So Paul started in church, in the synagogue, but he rather be in the marketplace Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, day by day, he was there because he wanted to share Christ. And then eventually, he came to Mars Hill, to the Areopagus. This was the place the top Athenians spent their time, the Bible says, doing nothing but talking about and listening to the latest ideas. This is the council. This is like their parliament. This is the place where all the thinkers come and discuss ideas. Paul was invited in. Once he stepped in, he knew what he needed to do. He built a bridge using secular pop culture, the popular culture of the Greeks. He built a bridge to share with them and let them know that he understood what are they thinking about. He quoted from their poets. Why? He wanted to engage them. But his crossover method has a message that he wanted his audience to hear. He used his secular pop culture as a bridge so that he could preach the good news of Jesus and the resurrection. Friends, in all our engagement, whether is it in business, in education, in us and entertainment, in everything that we do, the end result must be to preach Jesus and the resurrection. You see, what's the point of engaging culture if we don't talk about Christ? Friendship evangelism isn't evangelism if Jesus is not featured in your conversation. See, you got to get rid of this idea. Well, as long as I'm successful, I shine for God. As long as, as I'm, I'm excellent and creative in my industry, I'm glorifying Jesus. No, friends. Relational soul winning isn't soul winning unless souls get saved. Paul was so contemporary, so relevant, so cool, so cultural savvy. You know why? Paul says, I have become all things to all men that I might by all means save some. Now this I do for the gospel's sake, that I may be partaker of it with you. Paul knew I can't save everybody, but I will be as relatable, as contemporary, as relevant as I can just to save a few people. Now, that day at Athens, some people mock at him. Every time you preach the gospel, people will laugh at you. Others wanted to hear more. But some people got saved. One of them was this man called Dionysius. He was an influential man. And his name suggests that he was in the entertainment industry, a high flyer up there, and he was a man given to drinking. He loves, or he loved alcohol. Dionysius actually means the god of alcohol. Now, he became a convert, but he didn't stop there. He became a disciple of Paul personally and ultimately the first bishop of Athens. 
When he became a bishop, he didn't stop there. He transformed the realm of arts and entertainment and used it as a platform to preach the gospel. Now, that is what third space Christianity is all about. That is what we've been preaching all these years. you got to engage culture, but with the purpose of wanting to preach the gospel. Now, now recently there was an article on the British Prime Minister David Cameron, and I was really blessed by it. It's only in April this year, so it's three months ago. You know what the Prime Minister of England said, or, or Britain said? Christians should be more evangelical about their faith and get out there and make a difference in people's lives, David Cameron has said. In his strongest intervention on religion to date, Mr. Cameron said that in an increasingly secular age, Christians need to be even more confident and ambitious. I like that very much. I like that. Can you imagine a world leader, a world leader telling the church, once you get there, preach the gospel. Oh, come on, let's give God a big clap. Hallelujah. 